Welcome to Nico Muras, a world full of sprawling cities and dark secrets. In the wake of the trial, a divine act of righteous judgment, the world has been launched into an era of rebirth. But there are those who still lust for darkness and ruin. Follow us across the continent of Talyra, from the deserts of Elon Rhyme to the fields of Rivaluna. Deep in the Bloom Rose Ocean and high above the Alisar Mountains, our story will see our adventurers through glory, fear, and fortune as they make their way through the Paper Dungeon. So we're live. Woo. Awesome. Right. So, Havel, you awake, chill, laying on the cold stone floor of your cabin. Um, your eyes are blurry, um, as if you've been sleeping for a very long time. Um, you can feel that you're like butt naked, um, laying oh, no. on the stone floor. Um, and as you come to, you begin to make out the shapes of the furniture in your cabin. Um, you can see um, blurrily the cobblestone fireplace across the way um, with your long couch in front of it. Um, you lay near your tables with your chairs. You have a chess set on top of that, all set up and ready to go. Um, and as you begin to come to and your vision clears, um, you can see there's a figure above you. Um, he extends his hand out towards you. I, I suppose I go out and reach it. No, like, as I, soon thank, as you, grab, thank you. As soon as you go in and reach for it, he grabs your arm and twists it around. Um, and in one fluid motion, he takes what looks like this bone shard that you can just barely get a glimpse of and shoves it into your arm and beneath <clears> the skin. <throat> Um, an emotion that is so fluid that you can tell he's done it many, many times. Um, and then he gently places his hand over the wound and this dark green um, glow emanates for just a second before he takes it off um, and then helps you up. Um, That's a, that was a little bit rude, don't you think? Protocol is protocol, as you know. I, I suppose. Um, I mean, all right. I um, the same. Why is my head so heavy? Uh, do we have a do I have a mirror around here? Um, one sec. Um, I'm gonna go find a mirror, which I assume I have one in my bathroom. Yes, yes you do. So, um, you the cabin that you've been living in for the last several years is um, pretty well furnished for such a small cabin in the woods. You know, you have your nice fireplace with rug and a sofa and a coffee table. You have a table, a small kitchen, um, pretty well supplies. You also have um, your bedroom out. Um, and the, the only like separated door um, is this bedroom that leads to your bedroom. And as you go in it, you can see that there's um, your bed, um, well made and kept as you're a man of um, disciplines and principles. Um, and then you can see there's a, a mirror. Um, it's not like a huge mirror. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of the, a, a good medium sized mirror with the, the, the edges beginning to um, show signs of wear. Um, but in it, you can see um, before you is this um, purple tiefling with two sets of horns, one going straight up and another that curls around, your ear slightly pointed. Um, your jaw just as chiseled as before. Your eyes are now a different color. Um, you feel a little stockier. You're not quite as lean as you used to be. Um, you're a pretty good looking boy. I, I see. And I look, I look over at... Um... My friend here, my newfound uh, comrade, <laughs> for, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm glad that you captured my handsomeness. Oh, and well, it's something that is hard to miss. How, oh. do you, how do you feel? Do you like your new friend? I like, I like run my hands across my horns. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, you know. Yeah. 
Mm. It, it's an oh. interesting sensation. Your head is much heavier than it used yeah, to be. Yeah. Um, and as you go to like turn, you can feel like almost like <laughs> whiplash yeah. and like weight. Uh, you have to get yeah, yeah, yeah. you found balance that you're trying to discover. Um, I I like it. I, I do. I think I think this is going to work well, actually. Um, no, as well. I think it will achieve your goal and allow you to really enter societies. I, mm, I, I do hope so. Uh, oh, well, hold on. Let me get dressed. Um, I, I like now realize that I'm buck naked. Yes, yes <laughs> I'm just like, right. Uh, one, yeah. one moment. Let me. As, let me as just, you look um, down, you can see you have like six pack cuts. Like you are jacked. It's it's pretty profound. You, and like as I, I like go over to my cupboards and I start like pulling out clothing um, and putting on a nice shirt and jacket and pants and stuff, I'm like, mm-hmm. um, you know, I I can't help but thank you for this. And like I like now sliding on my jacket, grabbing my jewelry. Yeah, and, like, all of, all of your clothes are just slightly like you had like slightly baggy clothes before. Yeah, but they're all just a little bit tighter now um, yeah. as they fit you. Um, yeah. I'm just like, I, I'm a lot more built than I remember being, but I'm not terribly concerned about that. Uh, one second though, truthfully. And I, um, I'm actually going to, um, out of my like bag of stuff that I have, I bring, I'm going to take out a needle okay. and I'm going to re I'm going to try to the best that I can, uh, re pierce my ears oh, nice. <laughs> and then, uh, put my oh. earrings in. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, I'm gonna you, just so, take the time to do that. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna you're gonna sterilize the needle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep, go yep. you go to your kitchen. You grab a pear or an apple. Um, all the meanwhile, this stranger that you really barely know. Nah, he's um, my best friend. Just kind of made a deal with you. Um, it's just kind of like wandering about your cabin, looking at some knickknacks every once in a while. Um, and you go in and you put the pear behind your ear. And you kind of line up roughly where it is. You're trying to like look in the mirror and figure out where everything should be. Yeah. Um, and you just go for it. Go ahead and roll a, a sleight of hand check for me to see how well you can pierce this ear. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. You know, we're, we're doing work. Um, the 15? 15 will be good. Yeah. yeah, no. So you, you go in, you get the pair behind. Um, you kind of line it up and just ah, real yeah. quick, um, right through, <laughs> uh, a little painful, but nothing that you are not used to. Um, at which point you, uh, you is, so your needle is just ever so, f- um, fatter towards the end where the eye of it is. Yeah. Um, so you can't like push it through and immediately hook an earring through. So you have to like pull it out and then quickly put your earring yeah, in yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that the hole doesn't like close too far. Um, but you managed to do it. Um, same thing on the other side. You managed to get it um, just about in the same spot. So they're matching. One isn't higher than the other. All mm. that good stuff. You know, you're not actually, no, yeah, yeah. you're seeing like your like eyeball it one. and then your triple or whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it works out well. You have your um, your two earrings hanging down, um, your, your copper plate hanging down. Wonderful. Um, yeah. And uh, as, as I'm done with that, I'm going to turn to our... Um, my newfound friend, my, uh, the man, 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 the man of the hour, truly, um, and go, um, quick question, actually, now that I mm-hmm. think about it, um, do we have to worry about a body? A uh, body? Yeah, well, the previous one, you know, the useful, no. the, the not so useful we, one. We don't have to worry about that. And you can see that there is a body in the corner. Um, but there's already like vines and leaves growing up about it. Um, and like mushrooms growing off of it, which is kind of weird because your the, the, the floor of your cabin is all like, um, like stone flakes that have been yeah, like yeah. and everything like that. Um, and so plants don't grow through here, um, by any means. And so it's rather interesting. Um, this man being of his nature, you can tell that he's, he's fey. Um, you, you, you saw him before we started and brought him into the cabin asking for your requests and everything like that. Um, but you haven't really taken the time to like actually look at him quite yet. Um, and so as 
he is, as he's beginning to take care of his body and everything like that, you can see that he's a fairly tall man with dark skin. Um, he looks to be um, someone that would um, would be almost like a hunter. Um, he kind of has that um, dress all upon him. He's kind of wearing a fur coat. Um, he's got long hair with like beads through it. Um, his ears are sticking very up and kind of curve in um, where they're pointed um, with little tufts of, of hair coming off the tips of them. Um, and you can see two sets of tattoos that go up and around his eyes. Um, they're both like a dark green um, color. The, it starts with these um, lines that come around his chin and then down the sides of his neck before curling underneath his shirt. And another set that um, mimics that, but it curls out around the cheeks and then um, again goes up over his eyes and curls over his um, forehead as well. Um, he's fairly grimy, um, clearly not someone who takes baths or um, gets in water often. Um, and so um, this is kind of the man that you've been entertaining for a little bit. Um, and he's just casually walking about the cabin now. Um, mm -hmm. every, every once in a while, he'll pick up a, a knickknack and he looks at it almost um, perplexed. Um, like it's not something that he sees be has seen before. Um, you see him um, actually take and pocket a, um, a little box that you had that you recognize as like a music box, um, just a small one. Um, and he just like, he took it, he opened it for a second and it started to play, um, at which point he like quickly closed it and like stuffed it in his pocket. No. Um, ah, Opal's Ninth Concerto. That's a good, that's a good one right there. Um, collector's piece, but you can have it. I'm not one for yeah. music. Oh, well, it's good. Uh, payments, we can say, partially. There are other things that I will request of you soon, and I will be keeping in touch every once in a while. Of course. Uh, if you leave me again, you know where you can find me. Um, at which point he turns and he begins to leave, um, opening the door. And um, he walks out the door, and then when you go to follow him and see where he's gone, he's completely disappeared. Right. Um, completely by yourself here in your cabin. I yeah, I, I suppose um, my the people that I meet or associate with become stranger and stranger the more I get into this business. Right. Um, or okay, I suppose I should probably go get packing. So I yeah, I'm actually gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go grab my uh, suitcase. Mm -hmm. Well, suitcase. Um, more like I'm going to neatly fold a bunch of clothes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it in uh, into my pack. Yeah, uh, the best that I can. At least a um, enough clothes to last me about a week. Yeah. Um, okay. um they're I, I'm gonna take the nicer stuff, right? Like yeah. whatever. Like I'm not, you know, I'm mm. not gonna really touch the uh, the more rundown shirts that I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but definitely gonna take the nicer nicer stuff. I uh, pack up my coin purse neatly. Um, and actually, I'm going to recount my coin. Oh, nice. um, just, just to be sure. Um, yeah. Don't I? Okay. I just want just to make sure that all the coin is um, in the exact amount. Like, like not that I don't trust my friend, but obviously I <laughs> want to make sure that he didn't uh, do anything no. while I was out. Perfect. You, um, you recount your coin, and um, all of your gold that you have, um, all your gold pieces are with you, um, along with um, your other forms of currency is all yeah. there with. You. Um, and yeah. so you, you're well taken care of with how much money you have, wow. um, with all the money you have. Um, I, um, so yeah, yeah I, I do that. I pack up the like physical coin to the pack. Um, I take my rapier, um, mm -hmm. my rapier and short sword. Yeah. And, um, I strap them to me. I kind of, you know, I, I polish my boots for a a bit of a travel um and i um i definitely so how much food do i have like actually you have, in the... you're actually running fairly low on food Ugh. um your your friend qatar is supposed to be arriving sometime in the next couple of days to provide you with food um which actually brings me to as you're packing um you your clothes and getting everything folded and everything like that, you can hear a knock on the door. Um, it's the it's the knock that um, you guys have worked out together to make sure that you know who is there. Um, okay. Kind of bop, 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 bop. Um, at which point you recognize that that is Qatar who's at the door. I, oh, oh, 
Oh. Hmm. He he gives the knock. I, yeah, yeah. I, I I run over very quickly. Um and go could like lean my face up against the door. I'm like, guitar? So that um is that you? It, it, yeah, it, it's me, boss. Yeah. I came with your delivery. Um, yeah. Um so weird circumstance that we have here actually. Oh yeah. Um, so I was, so I've actually been experimenting with a little bit, you know, I've got some books that came in for me, um, okay. and I've been experimenting with, um, a, a couple of, uh, of tricks that I can pull on people. Oh. Um, yes. Uh, and, uh, well, let's just say that one of those tricks, um, is currently in effect and I don't, I don't want you to panic. Okay. It's still me. It's still me. Havel. Okay. Um, so don't don't freak out. And I like just like quietly open the door. But like I don't I don't like show myself. I like open the door and hide behind it and let him walk in. I'm just like, come in. <laughs> uh, okay. And he has um you can see that he has basically a wheelbarrow of food. I'm kind of stacked up. You can see that there's lots of vegetables, some gourds, fruits. Um, you can see that there's a lot of dried meat on there. Um, some uh, uh, bag of salt like that. Um, and he brings it in um, and then wheels it to the kitchen like he does just about every time um, before turning to see you um, at which point he goes mm. I told you not to panic you told me you weren't going to panic I don't like this don't panic I'm not do panicking not, do not panic I'm not panicking you okay. know what we do to people that panic yeah nope uh, we, yep we don't goes, panic he yeah. goes, you you know you know what you know okay tell you, you are, what you look good thank you i i think so myself um i do have an offer for you though okay um listen yeah. they don't have to know about this okay they 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 as in the they them yes yeah yeah they don't okay. have to know. Understood? Possibly. Depends I, on... Uh, I take out my coin works. purse and I go, listen, I will give you 100 gold, plain and simple, right now. Okay? I don't have much, but I do have 100 gold. I'll give you 100 gold 100. and a favor in the future. And a favor? From myself. No one else. Just don't tell anyone about this. Understood? Um, you don't know me. What am I supposed to tell them? That you, that I, you weren't here? That when you showed up, I wasn't here. I was out for a walk. Oh, God. And he, like, he like looks down. He can see the, the decaying body yeah, in the corner. I, I like, back, back to me. Back to me. Uh, uh, back to me. Why are you dead? I'm not. Uh, but you are... What did but, you do? You, you. I'm, I'm perfectly alive. Mm. You can see, like he, he's fighting in his head because yeah. he now sees what he knows to be Havel dead on the ground, and now there's this guy claiming to be Havel, right here in front of you, who acts like Havel. Guitar. So he's rather confused. Guitar. I like pull up a seat, and like. Don't really offer it to him, but I sit down, like spin it, so that way, like I can prop uh -huh. my arms yeah. against it. I go, Qatar, listen, you're a very smart man, you know. Out of all the merchants that I know of, you're the smartest. Uh, You've thank you. Always shown high intellect, and in fact, because of that, as a smart man would, you would take the hundred gold, the favor that I offer you, um, any favor. I'd do anything for you, honestly, my word, and. All you have to do is say that I wasn't here. Okay? Okay. I wasn't here. I, I'm still very much Havel. I can promise you. You can ask me anything if you want. Look, okay. I can even beat you in chess like I always do. Hmm. Three moves. Every time, remember? I just... No. Listen. no you can't. And he goes and he sits down at the table. <laughs> and he gets ready. He's like, um, he All sits right. where White is. And you can see you that he... So. Moves one pawn. I go, listen, Katarn, do you really want to do this right now? 
you have to prove that you're Havel and only Havel can beat me. I'm the greatest chess player I know, aside from Havel. Do you know many chess players? No. Right. Um, I take a seat across from him uh -huh. and I uh, mirror. <laughs> She's like, all right. Um, tell you what, one game, just one simple game. Mm -hmm. um, and then what do you say? 100 gold, a favor, hell. And I know, want. and you were never here. I was never here. I was never here. All right, one game. And he extends his hand. All right. Um, yeah, I start, I, I play him chess, I guess. I <laughs> Go ahead and roll just a, uh, a intelligence check for me. Okay. Let's see how badly I roll. Ah. <laughs> what did you get? No, no, no. It's great. It's great. We're okay. We're okay. It's actually the exact thing that I wanted. Um, 22. Yeah, he got a natural one. <laughs> yeah. So just like always, you come in um, and he gets, he makes his first move. You make a move. He makes another move. You make one more move kind of setting everything up and he's like, oh, great. This is great. He Got knows it. one more time and then you move <laughs> the, uh, into checkmate and yeah, he just yeah, kind of looks yeah. at you and goes, yep, 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 yep. Uh, uh, yep. Um, <laughs> I guess you really are Havel. I, you know, born and raised in the flesh. I, blood and brimstone the whole nine, you know? Okay. Um, All right. You were never here. I was never here. And I take the gold and he sticks his hand out. And I honorably give him a hundred gold. I'm not gonna try to hoodwink him. <laughs> um yeah, I, anyway. yeah, I give him a hundred gold. I'm like, you're counting the gold. What do you think I'm gonna lie to you? Come on. Of course I do. What Fair, do you... but come on. This is like our whole profession. We're we're men of of honor, you know, honor among idiots, right? He counts the gold anyway. <laughs> right, gold pieces. Um, and the favor well, in due time. And the favor. If well, you I, just uh, have to find me and you know how to find me, I'm sure. I'm sure you can find ways. But I, if anything, I'll come to you. Right. Okay? If I'm ever if I'm ever in these parts again, I'll come, I'll come to you. You can see him eyeballing the uh, the body, which is very quickly decaying. Yeah. Um, what Don't... about 20 minutes ago was um a body just kind of engulfed in vines is now like half collapsed and you can see that there's mm. like dust around it um mm. and it's pretty well decayed something um way faster than it normally would be um it looks like it's been about six months since that body has died now um at Jeez. which point um qatar sends um and he sticks out his hand and he says well i uh i hope i never see you again as do i and i shake his hand um before making his way yeah. he um as always he leaves the cart normally he comes back a few days later to pick it up um guitar yes um quick question uh yes. what did you find here today i found uh nothing you weren't home exactly i wasn't home That's yes right. i was out on a walk Okay. Yeah. Right. Kind of, yeah. Pleasure. Right. So long. Enjoy your trip home. And he uh, he closes the door or opens the door, closes the door, um, and you can hear him kind of crunching along the makeshift path that leads to your um, leads to your cabin. I load up on food. <laughs> hey. Yeah, there's oh. tons of food there. There's like I said, there's a big pumpkin that looks like it's really um, ripe. Um, there's a couple of the gourds, some corn, some vegetables, some potatoes. There's plenty of fruit. Um, there's lots of dried meat. Um, a few couple, yeah. uh, like three or four loaves of bread. Um, I Well, first things first, I have a meal. Mm -hmm. I'm a little hungry. New body and all. Yeah, um, sure. Second. Something that's rather interesting. You used to love fruit, specifically yeah. strawberries. And now you can't uh, stand them. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> okay. Well, 
I mean, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I wonder about other food I don't like. <laughs> I tried the cheese. I still like the cheese. You do still like the cheese. Great, I'm you not like lactose intolerant. Like a lot of the, <laughs> um, you like isn't that everything else that he gives you? You like, but for yeah, some reason, not the strawberries. You just can't stand the strawberries anymore. That makes me sad. Yeah, I always did like the strawberries. They were, they were, they were just sweet enough. But okay, well, um, right. I yeah, I pack up most of the, um, I pack up most of the 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 meat. Mm-hmm. Um and uh definitely take some of the fruit along with me. I like put it in a sack if I can. Yeah. Um, just a small sack. Um, I, I gather most of this you got about 15 days of rations. Wonderful. Um that is hoping that the majority of them don't spoil. Yeah. Um and I uh do I have a, a like localized map? Yeah, you have a map. Um they're they're kind of split into two. You have one map that consists of the um southern reaches of Talaira um, that has the continents of Akleron, East Bravania, um, Elon Ryan, the Scarlet Wastes on it. Um, it's a pretty large map. It's a pretty well made map. Um, and then you have another smaller map that's specifically for Vianola, which is the country that you're currently in just north of Akleron um, across the Luningkona Mountains. Um, okay. Uh... I mark, yeah. I mark, I mark course to Athala. So I like make Perfect. note of the trail going to Athala. Um, yeah. There, there's a couple different paths. The fastest one, the one that only takes a couple of days, you have to go through um, the Roseover um, Pass, which is a fairly um, kind of sketchy path um, that um, travelers will go through. Um, you know that um, Vianola is a nation of wood elves. Um, and Akhleron is one of the free nations, one of the blind nations um, mm-hmm. that doesn't really see race. And so um, there have been contentions before in the past. Um, and while there's peace right now, um, there's always um, a little bit of mistrust. And so uh, that path is always um, a little tense just because you're traveling from one country to another. Um, yeah. And a lot of the people you meet along there never really know what to expect and are always suspicious of one another. Um, along with the, the fact that they're both basically in wild country. And so kind of anything can happen, um, whether that's encountering um, monsters or, or wild animals or bandits and caravans, stuff like that. Um, is all, I, um, I take the safer path. <laughs> <laughs> um, how much longer does the, does the much less likely to kill me pass? Um. <laughs> yeah, so if you look at the map, you can see that there is... Um, Vianola up here and Akleron here. And then there's a strip of a mountain, a mountain range that goes kind of um, around it and curves up. That's the Lunin Kona mountains. And so um, when, when you look at it, um, there's a path that goes around the east side or not the east side, um, the west side of the mountains, um, then then heads back towards Athala. Um, it adds about probably three, three weeks of travel um, to uh. <laughs> so it is I get mugged by street bandits or possibly mauled by bears or takes about a month for me to make it to where I need to go which is a month that I lose out on drinking and enjoying myself in a new city full of people that I've never met before mm-hmm Right. I do have a wagon. Do have have a wagon. Does it still have the horse? Um, you do have a horse. Um, it's has been around for a long time. It's kind of been oh, your sole no. companion for these for these last five years, um, and it hasn't pulled anything or really ridden anywhere in a long time. It just kind of like grazes around. Um, the property it's it's a loyal horse and so it stays mm-hmm. um and it's never really too far away um but it hasn't pulled anything for a while so you know that it would it could probably still do it it's not like it's super super old um but it would be um definitely a workout for it and it probably couldn't travel um the full capacity that it could in a normal day still more than what you could walk 
but um, not as far as um, having a mount could give you. That is um, unfortunate. Three spirit, just like me. And I like pat him in the rear, mm-hmm. just lightly. Um, and turns uh, and, and neighs at you just a little bit before shaking its head and going back to grazing. Um, well, guess I am taking the three day trail. Um, hey. I'm sure. I'm sure things will be great. Yeah, it'll be fine. Should, I, what could possibly go wrong? Um, I'm honestly more worried. Like, I, and like, I I go inside, and I'm actually gonna get like a quill and um, or mm-hmm. like charcoal or something and some parchment. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna write uh, down some stuff, and as I kind of do, um, I'm like, honestly, like <laughs> I like stop and like look out the door. Like how how far do I think that um guitar is? Um you probably think that let's see, it's probably been um oh it's probably only like well you made food, so that took a little bit of time, um and then you packed everything up. So we can say it's been about an hour. Um so it's probably, you know, a ways three three or four miles away by now. Eh, not worth it. Oh well. Hopefully the idiot just kind of listens and does as I say. Um, all right. I, yeah, I, so using the charcoal and parchment, I'm going to um, sort of scribble down uh, a, uh, a list of things that I technically owe people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I like, like I, two favors. Two favorite dash guitar yeah. dash Fay dude. <laughs> <laughs> he never told you his name. Yeah, he never told me his name. I never asked, you know. Um, you know. I uh, yeah. With that, I'm gonna just start. I'm gonna start heading out. I'm gonna head out three days. You know, really hope for it. I'm gonna head out three days. Um, hand you know, on my radio. Really hope for it. I'm gonna head out at the bottom of my pack. Um, Fantastic wits on their end. <laughs> beautiful yeah so you begin making your way through um the vianola forest um it's a um, the really vianola forest beautiful forest um, it's a um, really like vianola forest, forest. Are, forest. it's um, caretakers um, of this land um and they do a very very good job of making sure that um the forest is well maintained um that it's never overgrown there's not any invasive species um species going um in and ruining the forest um this is their home and they take good care of it um, you know that you are at the like very southern tip of Vianola um, and more towards the north. Um, the more northern side of Vianola is, um, or a lot more of the um, Wood Elf tribes um, kind of take residence. Um, but you also know there's um, a few Wood Elven um, tribes uh, in and around the southern portion of Vianola, nowhere near as large or as common. Um, and you over the course of these last few years have figured out where they are and kind of where their boundaries of what they consider their territory is um, and learn to avoid it. Um, many times you have walked the woods and figured out landmarks, um, learned your way around it. Um, you are, you've always been a very observant person who wants to know his surroundings and where he could escape to and everything like that. Um, and so you have taken the time to really get to know the surrounding probably two or three miles of landscape around your cabin, along with the path that you take to get back to the main road. Um, and so as you look about um, and you begin making your way through, you don't notice anything um, that would be concerning. Everything seems to be about the same. Um, you pass through several of your landmarks that you have um, figured out, um, it's common trees, the um, occasional um, rock or boulder, um, stuff like that, before you eventually make your way um, to the main path, um, a pretty wide road um, that has um, seen a lot of traffic. Um, people will oftentimes go, it's easier to traverse through Vianola than it is um, some of the other landscape to the um, east of Vianola. Um, and so anything north of um, north of this country usually will go through Vianola as it is just the, the safer and simpler way to do it, um, especially if they're making their way towards Ocleron. Um, 
if they're specifically going to East Bravania, then they might um, go the other path just because it's easier than going through Vianola, back around the mountains, and then um, through Ocleron to get there. It just kind of depends on how much time they have. Um, but you arrive on this road um, probably about three hours um, after you've been traveling for a little bit, at which point it's actually fairly, it's beginning to get dark. You've had um, a long lay, a long day. Um, your friend didn't leave until mid afternoon um, after the, the spell had taken place, um, which is interesting because when you first, when it first started, um, it was um, very dark out. Um, and so you clearly were out cold for several hours, maybe even a couple of days before you, um, before you awoke. Um, but then you uh, packed up and you added, um, made dinner and spoke with Qatar. So it's been a few hours and you had a few hours travel. And so it's probably about getting to be nine o'clock or so. Um, and the sun is beginning to set, um, or has started to set. Um, and you have the feeling that you should be making camp fairly soon. Um, as you get emerged onto this road. Nice. I, yeah. Um, so here's the thing, right? I am going to <laughs> mm. I take my gold my gold mm -hmm. coin um, yeah. and uh, keep my earrings on, take my necklace off, put that into the uh, purse. Okay. Um, it's an heirloom safekeeping. Mm -hmm. um, and I uh, find a tree a pretty okay. notable tree and I'm going to dig a small hole and like kind of place it into there. Okay. Just pat it. Yeah. Um, keeping my earrings on and then I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to pull out my tinderbox, try to start a campfire. I was always bad at this, but perfect. Yeah. Go ahead and roll a survival check for me to see just how quickly you can set this camp and how sufficient efficient you can get it. Okay. Not very probably. Um, ten. <laughs> ten? Yeah, ten? 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 Okay, enough. You can start camp on ten. ten? Yeah. Um, it takes you a little while. Um, by no means are you a Boy Scout who has done this nope. many times. Um, you have very much been a man accustomed to the more luxurious side of life for the majority yes, of it. Um, if you are not in the city where you don't really need to start campfires. Um, yes, sir. And so it takes you a little bit. You have to go through a couple pieces of tinder. Um, you try and light it, stuff like that. Um, but eventually you do finally get a fire going um, and you pull out your bedroll. Um, at this point, it's getting to be fairly dark. So you're pretty happy that you managed to get this lit. Um, yeah. And as the sun goes over the, goes over the horizon, it gets a lot colder very quickly. Um, you being in kind of the, um, the equator strip, you would imagine that um, the weather stays pretty warm. Um, that's mostly during the day. And then as the sun, um, goes down, it gets very quickly, very, or it very quickly gets very cold. Um, and so you're very much glad to have your fire and your bedroll. Um, how, how, uh, what do you think, what, how, how do you want to be keeping watch if you're going to do that? Um, or what's, what's your plan? Are you just going to fall asleep? What, what are you thinking? So, um, so as, um, I'm actually going to set, I'm going to set a couple of traps. Okay. <laughs> uh, surrounding my camp. Very nice. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take some string that I have, which I have a ton of. I have like mm -hmm. ten feet of it. Um, I'm going to take some string and I'm going to um, I'm going to I'm going to set up a trap. So let me see here. How how would I do it? I would set it so that way I have string between two trees. Okay. Um, and then have it set so that way when you apply pressure to it, um, the string itself is that like it's it's like loosely wrapped onto like a branch or or a stick or something. Um, and then once you apply pressure to it, it loosens it. Uh, and I'm gonna have it drop a bag, oh, or at least like half a bag of of uh, ball bearings. Perfect. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and have you roll um, another survival check. 
um, to go ahead and make these traps. Can, can I, um, can, can I, uh, add my, uh, proficiency with, with thieves tools, because technically I'm making a trap. I'm familiar with traps. I know how to disarm them. Um, I know how to make them. <laughs> it's not quite the same thing. It, is, it kind of is, but sure, kind sure, of, whatever. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna, sure I'm gonna call. say no on this one. Oh. Um, yeah, just go ahead and make a straight survival roll. Oh God, why? <laughs> Fifteen. Oh, that's exactly what <laughs> you needed. Perfect. Hey. Um, yeah, you know, you go know. Um, with the light of the campfire um, kind of flicking. Um, you can feel the chill in the air as you kind of get a little bit further from the campfire, um, but you begin to make these traps. Um, you feel pretty confident that anyone coming up from behind you um, would probably spring one of these, especially since they can't really see it. Um, and then you have one kind of in front of you, um, and then you're just kind of hoping that um, if someone else comes from directly in front of you that mm -hmm. they'll, uh, they'll be yeah. able to trigger some sort of, that you'll be able to hear it in some way. Um, so yeah, you're feeling pretty confident that nobody's going to... Um, Nobody's going to end up in your camp without you knowing about it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Um, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> I, um, I'm going to sit down with my bedroll. Uh -huh. I'm kind of, uh, just like near the, near the, um, campfire mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm, you know, like now noticing that like the, the night is a lot clearer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> could be like oh i think this body has a little bit more ability than i used to have mm -hmm. like i like walk away from the campfire and like peer into the dark I'm like i can see <laughs> oh this is gonna be useful yeah okay and i like scuttle my way back to the campfire and get into my bedroll and yeah. i uh i go to bed i'm yeah i'm gonna go, go to sleep um you go to sleep um, and it's difficult for you. I don't know. You have a lot harder time getting comfortable, figuring out how to like horns. sleep on your side with these curled horns, but oh, you don't want to sleep on your God. back because that's so uncomfortable and your horns like go back a little bit. So you can't mm. like lean back because your horns begin to like poke into your bedroll. So you have to like, kind of like sleep almost forward. Like it's yeah. rather annoying trying yeah, to like, like prop out myself up. Um, yeah, how to find a comfortable position in which that you can um, finally fall asleep. Um, and it's not until you're just about falling asleep, you're just about there when you can hear um, this crunching of leaves before a twang. <laughs> ah! mm. um, as you can tell, that one of your traps have gone off. Um, I get up. Reach yeah. for my rapier. Right. <laughs> I unsheath yeah. my weapon. <laughs> Have at <So> the fiend. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can see that um, there's a uh, there's almost a teenage um, looking boy. Uh -huh. um, he seems to be he's a human boy. Um, he has freckles across his head with short, kind of scraggly, curly red hair. Um, kind of some blue eyes, a little bit scrawnier. Um, still like strong and fit, but definitely not built by any means. Um, probably about 18 or so. Um, you can see that he's wearing, um, some tattered clothes and, um, is in general, he looks like he's just not had a great couple of weeks. Um, and he's just laying there as this sack of sand or whatever you filled it with. He's yeah. like laying on his chest with one arm pinned and the other arm like reaching for something that he could like try yeah, and like yeah. cut this bag open with. Yeah. At least, I mean, yeah, that's, he probably triggered the worst one out of the two. Um, yeah, I, uh, I go over and I kind of just, I don't, I don't let him out of the trap yet. Uh -huh. I just kind of like kneel in front of him and I go, uh -huh. so uh, thief, how, how are we tonight? Uh, I wasn't here to steal anything. It's, it's cold and I just want to sit by the fire. Are you sure about that? Yeah, for sure. Okay. And I uh <laughs> I take I lift up the bag and like roll it <sighs> off of him. Uh -huh. Um and I go, sorry about that. You mm -hmm. want some food? 
um, yeah, I would, I would, I really like that actually. Um, I go over to my bag and I go, I like snap at him and point over at the fire and I go take a seat. He goes over and he still holding his arm. It looks like, like the, he probably saw it coming and lifted his arm. Oh up yeah. Mm. On him. Uh. <laughs> um, so you can see that his arm is That's already really... like bruising along his forearm, yeah. like showing up. Um, and so he's kind of holding his arm yeah. and kind of goes over and he sits down by the fire, um, leaning against um, the tree that you um, kind of dug a mm. hole at the base of. Um, and you can see him stick out his hands um, as it is a pretty nippy night. And he by no means has um, the proper um, clothing yeah. to stay warm without a bedroll or a fire or anything mm. like that. I, uh, I take out my spare, um, one of my spare jackets that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hand it to him and I go oh, here. Thank you. And he, I tucks it over his shoulder. He's not sticking his arms in the sleeves by any mean. Um, I, and then just kind of stussles in. I grab my water skin, um, and a, <laughs> I grab my water skin and I grab the sack of strawberries <laughs> and I, I hand him the strawberries, oh. um, and the water skin. And I go, now don't drink all the water because that's all I have for right now, okay? But you can have all the strawberries. I, I've come to a, not really take a liking to them for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, he immediately takes a pretty big swig um, of the water skin, um, a lot bigger than you would have liked. Um, yeah. mm. <laughs> or, and then reaching into the bag and grabbing like a handful of strawberries and just ripping through them um and he probably eats in like the course of like 30 seconds he probably eats like seven or eight um like take your time shoveling them into his mouth you're uh you're going to make yourself sick in the process um save some for later yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. okay Mm -hmm. um question Mm -hmm. now that i fed you gave you water and allowed you into my camp why don't you tell me your name um my name is marcus marcus Mm mm-hmm Pleasure to meet you, Marcus. Thank you. Um, what's, what's your name? And he kind of like wipes strawberry juice, and you can see like there's a almost like a pinkish smear across his face now. <laughs> My name is Havel. Well, it's a uh, yeah, pleasure to meet you, Havel. Thanks for um, thanks for letting me hang out. Um, the pleasure is all mine. But that being said, right? Um, <sighs> what are you doing out here? Um, well, I was supposed to be, um, heading towards on Ant- uh, but I, uh, I kind of got separated from my caravan, but actually I have a tendency to like wander. Um, and so I was just like going and checking out this grove before, um, before we took off. And then I, uh, I kind of got turned around and, um, might have, uh, maybe lost them. So I just kind of uh, have been um, been uh, trying to get back, but um, it's hard, you know, because I don't I don't actually know which direction on Athala is, and uh, I don't really know where I am, and I don't have clothes or food or water. Is he lying through his teeth? Uh, roll an inside check. <laughs> For all I know, he probably is. But, <laughs> 10 yeah so you can't necessarily tell if he's lying um he does look very very dirty and beat up mm-hmm. um and it's pretty gaunt and you can tell that he was very very hungry and stuff um does he have any weapons on him Anything not that you can see. um okay. he, he basically has his trousers some boots and a shirt okay. um marcus it doesn't seem like he has a whole lot on him uh yeah um stand up for me um, okay. Now, I'm going to check you for weapons, okay? You'd better uh, not go out and stab me. Okay. Do you have anything on you that I should know about before I start my search? Listen, man, I got nothing. Are you sure? I'm 100% sure. You're 100% sure. hmm Okay. I pat him down real fast. Yeah. No, you go through and you pat him down and it, he genuinely doesn't have any weapons on him. Um, nothing that you can feel. Um, you, um, there is a, like, like a one inch thick 
stick or branch in his boot that kind of goes up to his knee. Um, and you think it's like kind of sharpened on one end, um, but sharpened like he had a sharp rock and kind of was able was to chisel away at yeah. it, uh, but not really like, it's not like he had a knife that he could sharpen this with. Um, and so you like find that and take that out. Um, mm. And he goes, hey, that's, that's mine. Um, and kind of grabs mm. at it. You're not going to hurt anyone with this. I'll tell you that. Well, oh no! He like major. jabs you with the pointy end. And, oh, well, it doesn't like okay. hurt you by any means. It's not a pleasant. No, but that's not. That doesn't feel good. Okay, that was kind of mean. Like they just feed you. You know that, right? I suppose that's true. I'm sorry. And you're yeah. fine. Oh, um, oh, and he like jabs himself in the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that doesn't. An eye, an eye for an eye, a jab for a jab. I suppose. Yeah. Um. So here's the thing, Marcus. Right. Um. I'm traveling alone. That, simply put, um, mm-hmm. I wasn't necessarily expecting to take on any newcomers. Um, and I'm putting a lot of trust just letting you in this camp altogether. There is uh-huh. you know, yeah. a million parts of me that wants me to just kill you outright and then I have to deal with it. But I'm not going to do that. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay. In fact... Okay, and you, you can said, see kind of like his eyes are down and he's kind of like... Yeah. kicking a pebble around you said you were going to afala correct yeah okay so since you're going to afala why don't you join me i'm going along that same way hopefully we can find the people that you look you're looking for yeah. um yes but on a stipulation i want you to know something deeply i know people everywhere If you betray me, and if you steal anything from me, or even try to kill me, it is not going to end well for you, and it likely won't end well for me. And honestly, that's more of a pain for me than it is for you. Uh Okay, yeah. That makes uh, sense. I can can do that. Um, Yeah. Okay. Um, And he is, like, not really making eye contact with you, um, kind of just kicking around. You can see that he's gotten a little sheepish. Probably because he's very much been the kid that's like doesn't want to uh, wants to be his own man. You know, he mm. feels like he's 18 now or around that age, and is like, "Yo, I'm self sufficient and self sustaining. I don't need anybody." But at the same time, he also knows that if he's out here by himself for much longer, he's gonna die. Hey, Marcus. Um, and so he's kind of just sitting there going, yeah. um, "Okay, um, okay, Marcus, make yourself useful. Then, welcome to the crew." And I. Uh, I take out a dagger mm-hmm. and I hand it to him. And then before he reaches for it, I pull it away from him. And go, you're going to use this and you're going to use this to protect the camp. Don't play with it. It's a knife. All right. And don't you dare, don't even consider stabbing a man with his own knife. If I even so much as get a paper cut from you looking at me, it's not going to end well for you, bud. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can do that. Yeah. Okay. And I hand him the knife. He received it just a little too eagerly. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, like a Boy Scout getting his first knife. Yeah. Um, before, and he just goes, okay. Um, and he goes and he sits down and he pulls out that stick and he begins like actually sharpening the stick. Why do you, what, okay, sure. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'll, I'll take first watch. I got it. I got it. Yeah. With the, yeah. with the, the spear of the gods and that dagger that I handed you. Hey man, you know, we work with what we got. If not, I'll just uh, grab your rapier. You better not touch my rapier. This is mine. She's mine. Understood. Got it. Yeah. You right. have an odd connection with your sword. A sword is an extension of a man. You'll know once you have your own. And, uh, I, resting my rapier and short sword like on me like in my <laughs> arms i get into my bedroll and i actually lay the bedroll on top of where my like stuff is like mm-hmm. the hole that i dug i like yeah. roll it i like lay the bedroll on top of it and then like then proceed to get into the bedroll and like prop myself up against the tree yeah. <laughs> you can't since um he was sitting against the tree you do all this and then kind of like boot him off yeah the like tree. boot him off i'm like nope this is mine now <laughs> um at which point he kind of like goes and like sh- shuffles around to the, the other side of the um yep. the other side of the camp um 
And instead of like sitting down, you can see him just kind of like sharpening his stick and then every once in a while like jabbing and like practicing like he had, as if he had a sword. Um, yeah. And he kind of does that for about 15 minutes as you begin to like doze off again um, before eventually, just before you fall asleep, you can see him come and sit down by the fire. Yeah. Uh, and then you fall asleep. Um, several hours later, he um, comes up and he shakes you awake um, and he goes, hey, how will Yes, Marcus. Yeah, really tired. Okay. Yes. Um. All right. Second watch. Okay. Yeah. Take the bedroll. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. He just <laughs> yeah. like he like lays down in the bedroll, but then like lays his head in your lap. Oh no. Or just like falling asleep. Uh. Oh. Okay. Mm. Hey, Havel. Mm. Yeah. Yes, Marcus. Thanks for thanks for um giving me food. I like pat him like awkwardly on the shoulder and i'm like yeah yeah no i i know what it's like to um to go hungry if don't mention it get some sleep yeah okay he like falls asleep about five minutes later he starts snoring oh god <laughs> okay uh, um <laughs> I <can't>. well, <laughs> Shit. Um, <laughs> Go ahead and roll a perception check for me, bud. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, 18. Yeah. <laughs> I'm rolling good tonight. <laughs> yeah, you are. Um, you go through. Um, eventually, you come to terms with the fact that Marcus is snoring yeah. and overcome the urge to stab him and kill him. Yeah. Um, uh, well, this, you know. Yeah. Maybe gag him and bind him, but not necessarily. Yeah, yeah. You know, either <laughs> or. Um, and eventually you, you come into like this calm focus and you can um, really kind of get in tune with the surroundings and the environment. Um, and you spend several hours like this um, as you go through and um, the rest of your watch um, goes out without um, any concern or any, um, any troubling signs. Um, and eventually um, you can feel um, and see the sun begin to rise over the treetops um, and you shake Marcus awake, um, letting him know that um, it's time to get going. Um, and yeah, so you you wake up and the rest of your watch goes without a hitch. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, uh, as soon as I wake him up, I grab my pack and I, um, I take some cheese and some of the cured meats um, and a bit of the bread and I make like a small sandwich for him. I pass it off to him mm -hmm. um, and I make one for myself as well. And I yeah. go, all right, eat up. I got a long way to go. Mm -hmm. um, he like scarves it down. Yeah. Uh, this boy has no restraint when it comes to food. He probably hasn't eaten in a couple weeks, it seems like. Um, so anytime that there's any option for food, he yeah. just- He's like malnourished, yeah. borderline. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> You pack up camp and you make your way through. Um, you begin traveling again throughout the rest of this day. Um, it's it's a fairly well traveled road, um, and so you can see there's um, every once in a while there's uh, merchants that you'll come up next to. Um, there's other travelers. Most of them are elven um, making their way towards Ochtheron or from Ochtheron. Um, there's several merchants that go through. Um, some with um, fine silks. Others um, that have um, quite a bit of what looks like um, knickknacks and tinkered objects and stuff like that. Um, there are several merchants coming from Vianola that have um, a lot of wood and logs. Um, looks like a lot of, um, you can see that there's one cart that has um, a lot of really well cured um, hardwoods um, that you would guess a carpenter would be really interested in, um, along with other um, minerals and materials. Um, it's a pretty well traveled road um, as it is a a trade route between Vianola and Ocleron. Um, and so it's not like you're alone on the road, um, but um, certainly nobody's out there trying to make friends yeah. right now. They're yeah. all either on business or they're traveling for a specific reason um, and want to just get there as fast as they can. Um, and so you kind of tug Marcus along. Um, he's a pretty curious boy who um, you're having to like really like tote along as you're trying to make pace and he just wants to see everything, um, which can get a little bit annoying. Um, but you guys begin to make your way through and um, we're 
going to go ahead and go ahead and take our break right now um, as you guys are on this road. And so um, we'll be back in a few minutes. Um, we're going to go grab a drink awesome. back, um, and then we'll be back to continue with your journey to Aquaron. Hey. Yeah. All right, then. <laughs> cool. We'll be back in a few minutes. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. Yes. So we, uh, we just left off with um, Havel and his newfound friend Marcus traveling along the road. They had just awoken, um, at which point they begin traveling, um, making their way south again towards Aquaron, specifically the city of um, Athala, which they have now realized they both want to go to. Um, and so you guys spend a lot of the day traveling. Um, like I said, there's many merchants along this road. Um, and so you're spending most of it traveling when, um, again, after um, traveling for about eight hours, uh, making your way probably about 20 or so miles, um, you eventually make your way. You can see the mountains in the distance, um, probably about a day's journey from um, what you would expect to be the pass. Um, and so you, uh, again, are making your way through um, and you think that you're probably getting pretty close. Um, but now the sun is beginning to set again and um, it'd probably be a good time to start camp one more time. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I don't, um, Marcus, do you, uh, are, are you familiar at all with um, setting up camp? Um, I, I used to go gather firewood when, uh, um, when I was with the caravan. Sure, sure. Go do that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll start the, the basis of our, of our pit. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, here you go. Okay. Um, and he kind of jaunts out into the forest. Um, you begin, you know, making your, your pit um, and you are starting to get some stuff. You have a little bit of tinder and stuff like that that you typically start when um, in the distance you hear this booming roar, this um, kind of out in the direction that Marcus was um, heading out. Oh, no. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, I book it. I full on run after um, uh -huh the direction of Marcus. I go try to find Marcus. I yeah. Mean, so he's been gone for a little bit. Go ahead and roll um, another survival check to see if you can kind of track down to where he went. Um, I'll give you advantage because you um, knew the direction that he went and you so just good. heard the roar. Um, so I'll give you advantage. I'm, that. I'm so bad at survival. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled high. 18. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so you can make your way through. You can see the first one was a six. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, so you can see there's uh, some tracks going on. Um, you begin kind of following this rather loosely. You're not like a tracker by any means, but you can see um, the um, it probably rained recently here, um, and so there's still just a hint of soft ground, and so there's just some footprints that you can kind of follow. Um, and as you uh, as you begin following this. Um, you can see that there is um, bigger footprints that begin kind of following these small footprints um, that you know to be Marcus's um, before eventually you go into this clearing um, and you see a hulking troll um, standing in the middle of this clearing um, that's green and yellow pale skin with uh, black hair kind of going about. Um, and he looks confused, um, not... Um, has he had, you can't see Marcus anywhere. Um, and he looks rather confused as he's looking around and kind of wandering through. You can see in this, in this clearing, there's a um, pretty tall grass, probably about four foot tall grass um, with this ogre, or not ogre, this troll um, standing probably, oh, about 10 feet tall. Um, so very, very tall troll um, looking through this grass and kind of his long limbs that reach down to like mid calves, um, pushing through this grass and looking around. So I hide. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and roll stuff for me. <laughs> so first things first, I hide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 17. Ooh, um, yeah, you disappear into the grass. Yeah, I, I just duck into it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to... I'm going to like... Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And I like, <laughs> I like start walking towards the troll and then immediately turn back around. And I'm like, oh, come on. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I don't know how to, um, I can, okay. Uh, you know, I, 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 have I worked with tieflings before? 
Um, yeah, you you yeah. know that they um, typically, um, yeah, you've worked with tieflings before. Um, you know they typically have um, some sort of innate magical ability of some sort. Great. I start to really try for that, whatever that is in my case. Okay. Um, which if Go I ahead. remember, which if yeah. I remember correctly, I uh, manifest mage hand. Um, nice. And I, like, I just like kind of like hold out my hand towards the troll. Like, and I, I'm like away from it because like I've never cast magic before. So I'm just uh -huh. gonna like, uh, <laughs> and um, Go ahead and roll yeah. an arcana check for me. Okay. <laughs> oh no, it's just, <laughs> this is six. Uh, okay, oh, no. <laughs> just, uh, let me just pull this up real quick. You're about, the troll, the grove itself Ooh. is probably about 60 feet um, okay. in okay. diameter. Okay. And the troll is probably about 40 feet away from you. So I'm just gonna see, let me just check mage hand. I believe the range okay. is 30 feet. Yeah, I don't think it's very far. <laughs> um, mage hand 30 foot um yeah so you reach out um and you kind of like close your eyes and reach yeah, out yeah, yeah. um and you do manage to make the spectral hand appear um and it goes shooting out you don't have any control of it at the moment um but you shoot it out and it just kind of waves to the grass just about like yeah. 10 feet from this troll at which point it immediately like turns um and just <sighs> and it, swings at where the grass um, was that the hand um just kind of brushed by um yep, 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 and you yep. can see the half yep um so yeah i'm gonna make my way closer to it what is that hiding i'm gonna stealth again i'm gonna re-enter yep. stealth yep, yep. yep. <laughs> i'll say hide. it's the same stealth roll okay i'm gonna hide and uh yeah. make my way closer to him yep um i want to be about 30 feet from him Oh, yeah, you can make your way about 10 feet forward. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go, okay. And I, like, kind of, like, line up with him, right? I, like, lining up, and then I, like, line myself at an angle. Uh-huh. And noticing that he kind of he kind of saw the mage hand earlier, I'm yeah. going to try to do the same thing, but, like, at an angle, so that way he, like, starts leaving, like, oh, going yeah. away. I see what you're saying. Um, go ahead and roll one more arcana check for me. Okay. <laughs> this is this is to see how much control you have of this as since you've never cast magic before and this is a new ability for you. 19. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So this time you you you've always been a very very quick learner. Um you've always been someone who picked up on new skills and abilities pretty quickly um and so you're beginning to get a sense for like what it was that kind of triggered this and how it mm -hmm. felt and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, and this time you managed to make it like manifest in front of you instead of like shooting out. Yeah. Um, and you kind of like take a second and like wiggle your fingers and it wiggles its fingers and you're like, okay. And you like gently push it out and it kind of makes it away just floating over the yeah. grass before um, about 20 feet out past where it was at that angle that you um, just pointed out. Um, you like, Angry salmon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you get salty salmon. Uh, salty salmon in the grass. <laughs> yeah. Just, At which point the troll again like whips around and goes like marching over towards this um, yeah. and goes through it and he rips out a huge chunk of this grass. Um, probably like a good mound of it, uh, of yeah, its yeah. roots, like probably yeah. about a foot and a half in diameter dome. He like rips out and throws it um, as he like reaches through and around the this, this spectral hand. Um, at which point Roll, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Eight. <laughs> yeah. So he, he throws this grass, and you're kind of, you're looking around. You're wondering where Marcus is. You know, know that this has to be the thing. Um, yeah. You haven't seen him in a little while. Um, and so you're kind of looking around, hoping that you can find him, but you don't see anything. Your heart is pumping, mm -hmm. your ears, mm -hmm. you can like feel the blood mm -hmm. in your ears. Mm -hmm. It's rather weird because you can also feel it like at the bases of your horns, you can feel like pulsing um, or your heartbeat, which is kind of weird. Um, but yeah, you're, you're just chilling out, man. I, I take a ball bearing. Okay. Right out of one of my pockets. I take yeah. a ball bearing. Yeah. I take, wait, wait, can, okay. I listen, don't judge me. I swear I play this game. I can't exactly remember if Mage Hand can uh, throw things. 
So it can perform simple actions. Um, like, you know, just, just, you know, not like as an attack, just like yeah. in a direction. Page 256 of the player's handbook. Is yeah, I found it. Unless you can use your action to control a hand. You can use the hand to manipulate an object, open an unlocked door. Yeah, so I'd say you'd be able to throw a ball, throw a ball there. Yeah, just a, just, a, just a small, yeah. Yeah, so I take a ball bearing. Yeah. I'm going to take a ball bearing, right? Mm -hmm. With my mage hand. Yeah. Within that range. Yeah. And I'm just going to chuck it at the nearby tree line. <laughs> at the nearby tree line? Yeah, just... Okay. No. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to decide... Okay, well, let me hear. I can roll Arcana again if you want. No, I'm not worried about you being able to do that. Um, okay, what's his perception? Perception plus two. This is so go ahead and roll a performance check for me. I'm okay at these. I'm okay at these. I'm okay. Hey! 21! <laughs> nice. Yeah, so... Um, I'm getting so lucky with these rolls. <laughs> you, man, you chuck it. Um, and you think that you botch it for a second because it goes into the forest and you, mm. you personally can't hear anything. Um, mm. You think it's just like, you just chucked into the forest and it just disappeared. Um, at which point you can hear, you can see um, the troll's ear like flick back a little bit, kind of like a cat's ear. Um, and it like flicks back and it like turns around and kind of starts <laughs> and like slowly lumbering towards um, that ball bearing. Um, and um, you can see it go in and like grab a tree, at which point it's hand, like this is a big tree and it's hand like wraps around half the tree um, with its long, probably eight inch long claws um, wrapping around the other part. And it kind of like turns around and like kind of starts looking through and is lumbering towards this thing um, before eventually um, you can kind of see it and then it, lunges and it grabs something um, and you can hear um, this squealing um, horrible sound as it like turns around and it see it like rip the head off this pig on this wild boar um, <laughs> um, at which point it starts not mean on that um, and it just kind of like sits down and like starts picking away at this thing and eating it um, oh, no. so it's not gone by any means it's no. still like there but it's not focused on trying yeah. to find you guys anymore. I, I, I just kind of like make my way back a, a couple feet, you know, mm -hmm. like 20 feet or so. And I'm just like, my guess. My guess. Yeah. Um, you, you, you say that and you can hear some rustling in the grass before all of a sudden Marcus appears out of the grass and like crashes into you um, and almost like tackles you by accident. Um, and he goes, ah, ooh, ah. I pin him. I pin him, cover his mouth. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> um, yeah, you turn him down. <laughs> and you um, go, like, grab his mouth, and he, like, starts squirming just a little bit before he realizes that it's you. Um, and you just hold him there, like, to your chest with your mouth covering, with your hand covering his mouth. Um, and you, like, just glance up over the grass. And you can see that the troll noticed the noise but isn't as interested. Like he kind of like looked around and like looked towards there before like ripping another piece off this hog um, and began munching on that. Um, Holding on to him, mm -hmm. I take my arm and I slide it underneath his like left arm. Mm -hmm. And I start to just kind of like crawl backwards, like kicking my feet. So that way yeah. we just like slide back. We're shimmying yeah. our way out of the grass. Nice Go ahead and easy. And we'll, one more stealth check for me, this time at disadvantage. Oh God! Why? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Not as good as the other one. <laughs> what you get? Eight. Eight? Yeah. Um, oh God! I'm gonna die. <laughs> so you're you're backing up, and you're feeling pretty confident. Marcus is like. You guys are like getting in rhythm, so you're starting to like mm -hmm, figure mm -hmm, it out. Mm -hmm. um, before um, you're you're pushing back, and you um, you get out of the clearing and like kind of stand up, so you're not so much like crawling backwards, but more just like walking backwards. And you look behind you, 
um, and then look back forward and take one more step back and you snap a pretty big twig uh, and there's this big crack sound. Um, at which point you can't see the troll at this point, um, but you can hear it. Um, and you can hear it go, hmm. Run, 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 uh, run, 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 I like, I like pat him in the back and I'm like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. Uh, we, don't go, we don't go back to camp. We do not go back to camp. We, go back to camp. we do not go back to camp. Yeah. <laughs> we, so, we go in the direction of camp and then immediately just hook a right. <laughs> okay. So you can hear this thing. Um behind you, not like directly behind you, probably yeah, about yeah, yeah. 40 or 50 feet behind you. Um, but it seems to be like on your trail. Um, like, and you begin like, like making your way towards, um, you make your way back towards camp, which is just off the road. And then you hook a right. Um, so you're going almost like parallel to the road. Bush, bushes, um, bush, any bush? Can I find any bush, any brush? Um, any bushes? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's plenty of bushes. Um, okay. So you guys like dive into a <laughs> yeah, bush. Yeah, dive into a bush. Um, <laughs> and you're like probably about 10 feet off of the road. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, so you can still like, if you like look around, you can see the road. Um, as soon as I dive into the bush, mage hand a ball bearing, uh, carry it across the road. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You chuck it into the other like, side of the road. Not even, not even for accuracy or like reach, just like noise. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, exactly. I, I, I take a couple and like, just, eh, um, eh. yeah, you do that. And probably about 10, 15, 20 seconds later, you can hear as it goes barreling through the tree line into the road um and it just kind of like looks around and um begins breathing heavily uh, I, with its ears like on radar mode um looking around i cover uh i cover i cover marcus's mouth um, again yeah. <laughs> and this time i really like i really like pull it in branches to cover us mm -hmm. Um, um, it's, it's a good thing that you covered his mouth because, um, he begins to like whimper and you can feel like tears going over your eyes or over your hand. Um, as this troll how kind of looks about, um, and you see, um, as you look around, you can see that there's another little flicker of light, probably about half a mile, um, away, away from where your campsite was going to be. Um, and as you're, um, as you're watching this troll kind of goes about, um, before it like kind of is like radar mode looking around and it kind of squints and it sees that little flicker of light um, and begins like jaunting down that direction. Okay. And I can't tell what the flicker of light is from here. Um, you probably could. It looks like it would be like a campfire or some campfire. sort of, um, you know, torch <laughs> campfire, something like that. Um, okay. Um, I exhale. <laughs> <laughs> And I whisper into Marcus's ear and I go, okay, we're going to keep walking. Don't turn around. No matter what you hear, no matter what happens, don't turn around. Okay. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah, Understood. Go. Crying. He like shakes yeah. his head. He like springs, like sprinting yeah. down the road. Yeah. Um, you guys make it back to your camp. Um, I'm assuming you're, gra you're grabbing a lot of your stuff. Yeah. I grab, I grab my bag. I grab yeah. everything. We're leaving. We are not, uh, this is not camp. <laughs> yeah. As you uh, are gathering your stuff, you begin to hear like, sh like men shouting um, yep. and like yep. the, the, the whinnies of horses and stuff like that. Um, Marcus like kind of looks behind, I, but you grab him by his I, shoulder yep. mm -hmm. uh, and begin like <laughs> just pushing him forward as you guys like jaunt and begin to like jog. Um, down the road um, and you guys jog for probably a good while um, probably about 20 minutes straight before you finally um, let up because you can tell that Marcus is like about to like trip and fall mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. at which point you haven't heard anything in a little bit um, you feel like everything's probably mm -hmm. a little bit quieter you can't hear the men shouting you don't think there's anything up um, and so yeah that's that's kind of where you think you I, are I go I sit down and I go, okay, okay, okay. And I, I look over at Marcus. How's he doing? How's he holding up? Like, is he crying um, still? He's, he's not crying anymore. You can see like his face is probably is pretty dirty now, but there's like streaks going down his mm -hmm. cheek. Um, but he's not crying anymore. Uh, but he's still like, he's breathing really hard because um, um, he's been running for a little while. Um, but he just kind of goes and he like sits down 
at the edge of the, of, at the edge of the road and the coat that you gave him, he just kind of like pulls tight and just kind of like sits there kind of coming to terms with the fact that he could have been eaten today. Hmm. What, uh, what time of day is it right now? Um, it's, it's, pretty um, late. it's pretty late. It's probably like 10 30, 11 o'clock by now. Okay. Um, um yeah. I sit Marcus down. Mm-hmm. I put the bedroll down mm-hmm. and I go, go to sleep. Don't, um, I, I like, I don't want you to think about any of this. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're going to make it to where we need to go and we're going to make it fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. You did good today. You did really well. He, he doesn't say anything, but he nods his head. Um, and then just like lays down. Um, and then he, he, He's about to go to bed when he goes, hey, Havel? Yeah. Do you think, think my family is okay? More than okay. We're going to find them. Okay? I promise you. Okay. Things like that don't always happen. Okay? There aren't thousands of trolls out there. Okay? Just because we saw a troll now doesn't mean that there was a troll. You, you said you were out there, what, for weeks? A week at least, right? The, the trolls move. They hunt, right? It doesn't mean that it's been here forever. It doesn't mean that it was here when your family passed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Get some sleep. Yeah. He rolls over. Um... And probably like he's quiet for like five more five more minutes before he goes. Hey, Havel. Yeah, son. Thanks for coming for me. No need to thank me. You found me, remember? Yeah. Just glad that we found each other when we did. Yeah. Um. At which point he actually does finally go to sleep. Um. Through, throughout the rest of your night, um, go ahead and roll a perception check for me for your watch. Okay. No, that's a bugger, dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's, so, a, that's a three. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Good, no. <laughs> solid, strong rolls. Keeping yeah, you guys I, alive. Yeah, no, I, you yeah. know, like, uh, my mind's somewhere cool. else. I'm like, yeah. not. <laughs> no, you're, you're trying really hard to pay attention, but you haven't been that close to danger in a long time. Um, you're kind of impressed with yourself that A, you still managed to keep your cool under the pressure, which is pretty good. Um, you're like, yeah, okay, I still got it. You're also very impressed with yourself as you have a new ability that you didn't have before, which mm-hmm. is pretty cool. Um, and so you kind of like flick around with a yeah. mage hand and kind of begin to I stoke the fire. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah stoking the fire. Um, and you kind of experiment with what it can do. Um, and about like halfway through your watch, um, you can see that Marcus, um, begins like twitching a little bit, um, and kind of like rusting around, probably like having a nightmare. Um, he's just not having a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so oh. that's a little distracting to you. Um, Yeah. I, uh, I kind of go up to him, mm-hmm. um, and I, I, I'm just, I'm going to go up to him and I'm just going to lay my hand on his shoulder, mm-hmm. um, and kind of like tuck him in a bit more. Um, yeah. and I'm just going to sit next to him. Nice. Yeah. Um, when you put your hand on his shoulder at first, like flinches, um, but then he actually like relaxes after that. Um, and you can tell that um, just by you being there, like him feeling you be there, um, that he um, begins to feel a little bit better um, and uh, is a little bit more calm. Um, do you... So the rest of your watch goes by. Do you wake him up? No. No? Um, perfect. So you will take a point of exhaustion for that. That's um, fine. Um, but you 
um, you wait it out, um, at which point um, the dawn comes in once again, um, the sun arising over. Um, and it's actually a really, really peaceful morning. Um, you can see um, birds chirping um, and there's um, a few animals. You guys haven't really moved in several hours. Um, and you mm -hmm. can see there's like um, a couple of squirrels and like a chipmunk who are just kind of like hanging around the edge of your camp. Um, and so you wake him up um, at which point he doesn't really say anything. He just kind of like gets up and like nods at you um, before like beginning to like pack up the bedroll and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Um, as he gets up and we pack our camp um, and I put out the fire, I kind of, I walk up to him and I go, You did really well yesterday. I, full sincerity, um, when I first had to, when I was first put through something like that, actually, I'm, I, I didn't show nearly as much courage. Um, you know, you really worried me there for a second, but, um, but we made it. We're here. And listen, I, I take out the short sword mm -hmm. and I like full, like sheath and full. Um, and I, uh, I hand it to him and I go, comes a time where everyone needs their first weapon. I won't always be around. Keep the jacket, keep the sword. Okay? He, I'm not... he doesn't really say anything, but as soon as you like go, he doesn't even accept the sword. He just like hugs you through with like the sword over his chest and stuff. And he just kind of like hugs you and you can like feel him cry, begin to cry again. I reach my hand around his shoulder and I'll like uh -huh. pat him a bit and like all right all right bud yeah okay yeah sorry no you're you're, you're okay oh. um at which point he takes the sword and he tries to like put it around his waist but he is so much smaller than you that even on the mm -hmm. tightest setting of the belt loop like yeah, it so like stags a little bit we, we'll uh we'll get that fitted for you <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Um, yeah. How about, um, yeah. How about, how about we take a, take an hour, right? Mm -hmm. We collect ourselves. If, if you want, I, I can show you a thing or two. I'm a, I'm a bit tired, but I, I can show you how to use the thing. Yeah. That, that'd be great. Can we like, I don't know, get a few more miles down the road first. Yeah, no, no, of course. Of course. Uh, that, that's no problem. Yeah, thanks. Um, at which point he um, like helps you gather up the rest of your stuff and get everything packed up. Um, and you guys start to make your way um, towards um, a few more miles down the road. Um, as you guys um, are going through, um, you begin to see caravans again. People are starting to get about their day once again. Um, and there's actually one caravan in particular that catches your eye first, Havel. Um, you can see that it has um, a pretty plump man um, with a big red bushy beard, freckles across his cheeks and like slick back red hair. Um, and he has, um, he, it's him and he has um, two covered wagons that are following him. Um, They're towed by ox. And you can see um, that it's filled um, rather full with um, some, a lot of materials. It looks like a lot of rugs um, is kind of what he's selling. Um, and he's very loudly like calling and saying, has anybody seen my son? Um, and things along those lines as you begin to pull up um, and you get, you pull up and Marcus notices him and just starts sprinting towards him. Um, at which point um, he turns and yells once again, has anybody seen my, <clears throat> as Marcus like jumps into this guy's arms um, and like, bear hugs him 
Um, and um, he looks down and he goes, oh, Marcus. And he begins to like hold him in his arms and just embraces him again. Um, and they stand there for probably like two minutes just holding each other. Um, you can see that there's like, oh, like tears welling at this father's eyes um, as some of his servants and um, what looks to be his wife um, begin to gather around them and all like group hug, hold on to um, this boy. Um, at this point, they finally pull back and um, Marcus looks back at you and um, says, Father, this, this is Havel. He, um, he saved my life um, and he, um, he took care of me these last couple of days. Um, at which point, um, this, this burly man, he probably, he's about as tall as you around the six foot range, six, maybe a little bit above six foot. Um, but while you're like cut and jacked and like bodybuilder built, he's like bulky and strong by all means, but he has the dad bod going around yeah, um, yeah, yeah. big, like Santa belly. Um, but he comes over to you and he sticks out this, um, paw of a hand. It's huge. Um, and he sticks it out. And he says, thank you. Thank you so much, I, genuinely. I shake his hand and bow deeply and he, into it. Yeah. Actually. Um, he goes bow and he like pulls you in and like bear hugs you. Okay. Well. I see. Uh, I, I, I can tell where Marcus got um, his mannerisms then. A uh, hugging family, yes. yeah? <laughs> yes. Uh, Marcus Arelli, um, I should say. This is my son, also Marcus Arelli. Marcus Arelli III, I should say. Um. We can't begin to thank you enough for for this. Is there what what can I do? Um, here, here, come around. And he begins like pulling you around to the side of the caravan. Um, and you can see that there are rugs and chests. And um, the second caravan has a very like pungent smell to it, as there's a large mixture of spices um, and different dried goods stuff like that. Um, and he goes, "I've been traveling for. I recently did a trip to." Uh, Elon Ryan gathered many goods and have been selling them um, across Akleron and into Vianola and stuff like that. Um, we went all the way up north and then came back down and we were coming back through Akleron um, when my son disappeared. But please have your pick at anything uh, and I will also like, let me pay you as well. Um, and he begins pulling out um, his spring purse. Um, I stick my hand out and I go, where are you headed? We're heading back to uh, Athala, actually. Um, we have some uh, family partners there who do some business with us that we're going to um, resupply with before um, heading back down to uh, Elon Ryan to uh, try and sell some more things as well. Keep your coin, for one. Okay. No need. Uh, I've, I've seen... With full sincerity, sir... Um, I've, uh, I've seen more coin than most people will ever have. Um, and uh, I kind of like feel out the jewelry. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I go, I will happily um, accept payment and perhaps your family's uh, fine companionship. Um, if if we can, you wouldn't mind. No, um, no, of course not. Anything that you'd like. You know, see it on the cart is the, 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 the small favor that I can do. Are you are you sure you won't allow me to pay you? By I by no means are we a poor family. We can pay you quite handsomely. I'm I am by no means a poor man. Um, your your son though. Um, use that use the coin that you were going to. Uh, Used to pay me and get your get your son some lessons on how to use that thing, and I like nod uh, over towards. Uh, and he he looks back, and at which point you can see um, Marcus showing his mom this sword that probably is too big for him. Yeah, um, yeah, it's size it's sizable. <laughs> like, yeah, um, even for a, a short sword, sword like, yeah, it's, but... it's it's still a heavy weapon. And yeah. um, as you begin talking to his family more, you actually find out that Marcus, while he looks and appears to be around the 18 19 range he's actually 15 years old I mean, he's okay. just really tall and, and kind of gangly um and so by no means is he strong yeah. um and so he um is trying to like swing this around um and you go over and you 
um, begin to give him some basic lessons in stance yeah, yeah. and how to hold it and stuff like that. Yeah. At which point his forearms aren't quite strong enough to really like control it. Um, but he's having a good time. Um, and you guys um, begin to clatter. Uh, they, they spend the rest of the day just cooking um, and using a lot of these exotic spices. They, they set up a nice camp on the side of the road with several tents um, and stuff like that and um, create a stove at which point they throw on um, a lot of meat and potatoes and corn and a big, big meal. Um, and they, they, they use a lot of these exotic spices that you haven't really um, smelled before. Um, you've been down to Elon Ryan and that region before, but never for very long and never on a, a trip for pleasure, never on a vacation. It was always on yeah. business. Um, and so you have like kind of experienced some of these types of foods on the spices, but it's still a lot of really new food. Um, and it's all really, really good. You enjoy it a lot. Um, and eventually, um, they make their way into the night at which point, um, around the fire, they start singing and dancing and having really just this big old time. Um, and it's really, really cool because other, um, other merchants and other people that are along this road, um, they invite in and they allow them to join in and they cook for a lot of these people. And it, it gets to be the point that there's probably about 30 people around like six or seven campfires, um, all just hanging out and laughing. And um, a couple other merchants that were selling um, some beer um, show up and they all have some pints for everyone. Um, and so it's really this grand, nice mm -hmm. vacation that kind of shows the decent human side of people and just the celebration of finding their son. Um, I, um, yeah. I, I, I think back to some of my... Um old friends from my childhood and I uh as a part of the celebration I start um performing performing kind of like a tumbling act you know oh, nice. some, acro some acrobatics just along Very with nice. the music yeah um go ahead and roll a uh, a performance check just to just to see just how good it really is <laughs> could I just could it just be straight acrobatics could I like yeah, just yeah like, we can do acrobatics yeah. that's fine can we do acrobatics instead of performance yeah let's do acrobatics um, 17 <laughs> oh yeah. Nice. You're tumbling and, um, bending over backwards. You're like walking on your hands. Um, you, you, you've been a part of a circus before and you've been around that type of, uh, uh, situation. And so, um, you kind of go into some of those teachings and, and some of the, the foundations of what no. made you and who you are. Um, yeah. and, tap into some of that and really put on quite a show for these people not super easy to do any of the flexible stuff you know this uh -huh. body's not quite used to that yet exactly. but um i yeah, yeah do my best <laughs> um yeah you go through and you perform and everyone has a um, really great time um and very much enjoys it um and as this night um as this party goes into the deeper into the night and people begin to wind down and begin to um, really enjoy some of the, the deeper ends of their cups. Um, I think that's where we're going to head and stop this session. Um, and we'll pick back up with that for your um, small group session. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you all for uh, coming and joining us. This is the uh, first episode of several one shots that will be highlighting on um, the individual characters of this paper dungeon campaign um, before we go into um, our actual full fledged campaign where everybody meets up. Um, and so this is just a really great way that we can highlight the individual characters and then introduce you to um, some of our cast. Um, feel free to go check out our website, thepaperdungeon.com, if you guys have um, any information that you want to learn about. Um, otherwise, the VOD should be up pretty soon on our Twitch channel and on our YouTube channel. Again, the paper dungeon. Um, you can also follow us on um, several of our other socials um, just for little updates and just for, um, you know, seeing character art and stuff like that. Um, I believe we should have a podcast up pretty soon as well. So, um, yeah, Ryan, do you have anything you want to let people know? Um, no. Well, for everyone that is here, you know, thanks for watching. I hope to see you, you know, again on, uh, on Mondays to come. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, no, this, this has been a blast. Here's to, yeah. here's to the next one. <laughs> Definitely. Um, we won't be back on this channel next Monday. Next Monday we'll be on Hannah Schooner's channel, um, where we will do our part two of the, um, one night at Cheezer's one shot um, that we did, um, DM by Aaron Cleverad. Um, and then the following week after that is when we'll start again with our, 
um, again, with the continuation of these one shots. So um, if you guys like this or want to check us out again, feel free to go check out her channel. Um, she's freaking rad. Yeah. Um, and then she's also and, a member of the cast. Yeah. So. And the, uh, the, the one night at Cheezers is definitely a lot more of a sillier um, yeah. display yeah. of our cast. Yeah, it's um, a little, yeah. or we it's get, we get a little ridiculous. Yeah. um it's super super cool <laughs> and our playing power rangers it's pretty rad um, yeah. <laughs> so come check it out um, that'll be on hashtag channel next monday at um seven o'clock central standard time um so feel free to go check that out um but yeah thanks for everybody um for joining us um we're gonna go ahead and uh call this a session all right cool bye bye <laughs>